any city in India. We always talk about water scarcity during summer. and floods during rainy season. But the underlying thing is India is a resource rich nation. We have enough water. It's just that we don't look at wastewater as an important source. For example, in Bangalore, every day around 200 crore litre of treated wastewater is sent to the drain which is equivalent to fill 13 lakes in a month. If cities of India start looking at wastewater as an important source of water, then cities can sustain. Our aim is to make cities of India from water scarcity uh, mindset to water abundance mindset. This drove us to start Boson Whitewater, where this wastewater can be an important source for people to use. Hi, I'm Vikas Brahmavar. I started Boson Whitewater in 2008 and for the past five years, we have been enabling circular wastewater economy in Bangalore. So if you take Bangalore, we get the water from the river Kaveri. Uh, we pump it almost 100 kilometers away and then it comes to our city. This is one source of water. The other source of water is borewell or we buy water in tankers which is again either taken from borewell or any surface water and then that water is supplied to us. So this is the incoming cycle to anyone taking water. On the outflow what we do, say we live in an apartment complex, apartment complex they say 300 units apartments, they will have something called sewage treatment plant which is a plant designed to treat the water to make it usable for flushing and garden. So maximum they will use around 20-25% of the treated waste water. The remaining water, most of them send it to the drain. Apartments have a big problem of disposal of this excess water, right? And most of them don't want to be illegally disposing this water. So some of them, what they do, they spend money, pay money to the tankers to dispose this excess water to either government BDA park or some gardens. So we go to the apartments who legally want to become compliant and don't want to waste this large volume of water going to the drain. Right? We look forward for apartments who are 250 units plus. We send our team to a feasibility study. Their STP should be in a working condition and the treated water they should be using for flushing and garden. And they should have the required excess water of say 70, 80,000 liters excess which needs to be measured and then they should be able to give us space to keep our equipment around two and a half car park area to keep our equipment. They should be able to give us the plumbing line input from their STP treated water to our system and provisions for tankers to come and collect our treated water. All these are required at the apartment complex. So our systems are designed based on the direct portable to use norms. Uh, say for example, Singapore. Singapore government has this new water, which is a utility board, uh, which produces the portable water from the treated wastewater, and it is being supplied for the uh, domestic uh, residents for the domestic use. Our water, which we produce, is as good as that water. Say that water can be used for domestic use. Definitely, this water can also be used for domestic use. So when it comes to a boson white water system, we design our systems uh, based on the direct portable reuse norms and it has 11 stages of treatment to recover portable quality water. I'm Gautaman, uh, I'm with Boson since 2017. So uh, this problem statement solving their uh, recovering portable water from the wastewater is an exciting thing but thing is associated with there are many other problems to be solved. So one of the problem statement was this automation and how do we bring down the water cost. 
So our innovation lies in the pre-treatment which we follow. And the most important aspect is the automation. So in terms of bringing down the cost, uh, we don't deploy a manpower at site to operate and maintain the plants. So with the help of our automation, and we have deployed a lot of sensors in the treatment process, which collects the system performance, what quality performance at different stages. And all these being been controlled by our command center in our office, where we have the data of all the sites being collected in real time. So for example, if a system is getting choked at a particular stage, the pressure in the system starts building up. So that is an, uh, there's an alert which gets generated based on the threshold we configure on that particular stages of filtration. There are uh, two aspects which we uh, predominantly look at. One is the system performance metrics. The second most important we look at is the water quality. Our filtration goes up to 0 0.0001 microns so that it removes, it can remove the bacteria viruses present in the water. And uh, post this uh, filtration, we also take the water through disinfection systems. There are two or three stages of disinfection systems. Ours is a real-time treatment. The water gets get into the system, immediately it comes out of the filtration system. Unlike in wastewater treatment plant, they take time to treat process. We get this water sample tested in the third party laboratories. We test these parameters for the BAS 10,500, 2012 standards. And never ever we, I mean always we meet these portable standards. So that's how we claim this water as a portable standards. So uh, Emmanuel Heights is an apartment where around 290 families are living. On average, we are processing approximately uh, 60 to 65,000 liters of water every day. That is the volume of portable water we are recovering from the excess STP treated water left out after the consumption. Initial uh, few months, there was a lot of pushback. Even before installation, there was a pushback that no, what if this water comes back to us, we don't want it for whatever, for religious reasons, for, for personal hygiene reasons or whatever. But now it is one step in the correct direction, in the right direction for us now. And it will be a big <laughs> leap of faith to go to the next one as consumers. I don't think the residents would be welcoming this idea of let's drink this treated water, let's use it for bathing, let's use it for swimming pool. So there has to be a policy change. It has to be from the government down to the uh, society. So the water meets all the quality parameters of IS 10500 standards and it can technically be used even for drinking. But psychologically people don't yet adopt it for drinking. So we make it useful for industry where they benefit commercially as well using this water. Our clients currently are laundry industries, cooling towers where centralized cooling applications need high quality water, they buy our water. We have plastic extrusion industry, we have electroplating industry, we have semiconductor industry, silk reeling industry. All these industries who have previously bought tanker water now switch to us for two main reasons. One, their unit economics uh, gets benefited. The second important reason is if someone is buying tanker water or normal hard water from the exploited source, they have to buy twice the volume. Pass it through RO where there is wastewater in the RO and they are able to use only a, a, almost 50% of it. So now they don't have to buy twice the volume. They directly buy our water and straight away use it for their industry application. Now, not just identifying industry, now who is going to transport this water to the industry? We had to find that also. We initially thought we'll put our tankers, try to uh, do all that, but we found that without the existing tanker network support, we can't actually enable this for a city level. Right? Now, people call them mafia and all that. We were also in that same perception. But when we go speak to them, we understand they have been catering to the Bangalore's water requirement for the past 30 years. Bangalore's government water supply is only 50%. The remaining 50% of us depend on tankers to supply. They are catering to an important problem. Without them, we can't have water, right? Instead of exploiting borewell water, instead of exploiting water from a far away area and distributing it, wastewater is always available. It is not seasonal. So from an exploited source which is seasonal, they become a stabilized business. It's more predictable.
When we started, uh, we were hardly able to sell two tankers per day from that apartment. Now we have uh, 17 projects live and 10 large apartments which we are selling. Every day our production is 10 lakh litres of water every day, which otherwise would have gone to the drain, is being treated and sold. So our initial goal for the next year is to get to 25 lakh litres of water sold per day. This might happen March, April, uh, the coming 2025. We want to touch this 500 crore litre mark by 2026 end. So 500 crore litres of water sold per year. Uh, now if we touch that mark, we become a player throughout the world. There is no other model where decentralised wastewater is actually sold in a scale. So we should be able to touch this 500 crore mark by 2026. The social impact is the reason we started this because this infrastructure is needed for any city. We have enough water in the city. If we are able to enable this wastewater as an important source of water, that is why we keep saying we are the third source of water. One source is below the ground, one source is above the ground and what is the other source is the wastewater. So if this becomes an alternative source, then cities will expand faster and in a sustainable manner. So as a company, we look at social angle first, but social angle should be there without profitability, social angle will not sustain. So we look at technology implementation, we look at profitability, but the base for us to work is the social angle.